Hello everyone, I want to have a conversation about what I believe is RuneScape 3's biggest, mostly unaddressed problem, why this is important for the state of the game, and some ideas I have about improving that. Namely, that is how difficult and unintuitive it is to learn PVM. In my experience, this separates the community and serves as a barrier of entry for new players. For these reasons, I believe it is a very important problem for Jagex to solve and I've thrown in some ideas which could act as solutions. Some of these solutions are fairly simple, and could have large impacts. Before I go into it, I want to give a quick rundown of who I am and why this is something I care about. So I've always been someone who likes to interact with a lot of different communities on RuneScape. I love Elite or Endgame PVM, and I usually enjoy trying to push the game to its limit. I even hold a couple of records. However, I also spend most of my time in learner PVM clans and or discords. Teaching players PVM is something I deeply enjoy, whether that's the absolute basics or more advanced. In doing so, I've also learned a lot about what players struggle with and most importantly why they do. Now obviously, I don't have all the data that the Jmods do, so some of my ideas about the state of the game might be incorrect, but I hope to at least get a conversation going. Now, let's start by talking about what exactly the problem is. I think RuneScape 3 has a fairly big focus on PVM, whether casual or sweaty. While it's not the only part of the game that matters, I do think it accounts for a large portion of player activity. From my experience talking to many returning, new, or casual players, a lot of them have some initial interest in learning to PVM, but they then struggle to get into it and actually learn it, especially with the harder bosses. Many get discouraged after just seeing sweaty PVMers, and many more get discouraged after trying it out and failing. And this gets blamed on a lot of things, some of which rightfully so, and others less so. I believe that one of the biggest barriers to entry towards learning PVM lies in the lack of a path to learn that PVM. PVM in RuneScape 3 is very complex, and the key to becoming proficient at it is to build good habits and muscle memory over time. By first turning the basics into a habit or muscle memory, the player can then focus on a more advanced concept to learn, thus slowly stacking these until they become an elite tier PVMer. Unfortunately, to new players, currently the game often promotes no habit building, or sometimes even worse, bad habits. Often this is a less recognized issue, but I believe it is a root cause of the perceived difficulty of learning PVM. Specifically, this is a consequence of a few things. Firstly, new players get very little guidance on the habit building needed for PVM. For example, having good keybinds is absolutely essential to learning higher end PVM. Yet the game provides horrible default action mark keybinds, that's 1 through through the equal sign, and as most players rest their left hand around this area, Half of these keybinds are too far to reach comfortably with one hand, and thus essentially never used, especially when under pressure. On top of that, any additional action bars have no default keybinds to my knowledge. This means that players often end up with horrible or no keybinds, which subsequently makes learning harder PVM a much more difficult task than it's supposed to be. Secondly, the path in bosses to do as a player levels up doesn't sufficiently teach players how to PVM. Most low level bosses are very outdated, they have little to no real mechanics a player should interact with, and often have very little incentive provided to do them. Some examples of these would be the King Black Dragon, the Dagonoth Kings, Gobbers Dungeon 1, and to a smaller extent the Giant Mole. These bosses do not teach the player anything new, and therefore serve no purpose on the journey towards endgame PVM. This means that new players do not actually get a taste for what PVM is really like until much later, when their stats are around level 80 plus, and which a much higher barrier to entry, as tier 80 to 85 gear can cost around 20 to 40 million, and they require an investment in skills such as prayer, summoning, or herblore. These mid-level bosses generally are also much more difficult, and can be a decent step up from the previously mentioned bosses. Some popular examples would be the three elite dungeons and Gobbler's Dungeon 2. This difficulty spike can be off-putting, and leads many players to only doing them when they are massively overgeared. For example, 
Garbo's Dungeon 2 is presumably intended to be done with tier 70 to 85 weapons. Yet people often start doing them with tier 90 or even tier 92 plus weapons and armor. This leads to them not learning anything new here either, and then consequently deeming the actual hard bosses, such as Ferrago, the Angel of Death, and Zamorak, as being too high of a jump in difficulty, as these are the bosses intended not only for these gear levels, but they also expect players to have the skills learned from doing the previous bosses, which they often haven't actually learned yet at this point. I want to stress again that this is important, as one of the main things that causes difficulty in learning higher level PVM is having to learn many different things at once. Players who go from low level PVM skills to wanting to learn a higher level boss might need to learn the things like prayer flicking, defensive usage, adrenaline management, decent DPS rotations, ultimate usage, movement around the arena, and boss specific mechanics, and all of this at the same time, which can be incredibly difficult if not borderline impossible. This even leaves out things like hybriding, weapon switches, and soul split flicking. And thirdly, current systems to help players learn difficult PVM are very lacking. Practice mode is severely underused because the players are disincentivized from learning as it can be expensive to learn PVM, especially when it doesn't result in boss kills and loot and players are typically quite loss averse. While there have been a few absolutely great updates to alleviate this problem, such as the reduction of death costs, normal mode art glacier, or animate dead, in my opinion, these are a step in the right direction, but not quite enough. While the former two are great, animate dead serves as a massive crutch instead of an actual solution, which admittedly is currently needed to a degree. Usage of Animate Dead allows players to do higher level PVM, but again without needing to actually learn the bosses and their mechanics. While it has a place in allowing for a more forgiving amount of tankiness to learn some of the more difficult bosses, I believe it currently overachieves this goal, though this is already being addressed. Proper ways to smooth out the learning of bosses could serve to solve many of the issues Animate Dead is currently a band-aid fix for. Let's now talk about why this is a problem. I see a few reasons why this is an important part to address for the health of the game. Firstly, while the player base is not quite dying like many people love to say, I do think it's fair to say that it is relatively stagnant. While it remains fairly constant, it's mostly older players who have played for many years, and the influx of new players is quite low. This is the case for many different reasons, but I believe the state of PVM plays a part in it. PVM is a large part of the game, one of the main player activities, and it's something new players could look forward to. Yet, it takes a very long time to get to the point of being able to do modern PVM. All the early game bosses are outdated, they don't really have mechanics, and they often don't really have much interesting loot. This means that new players have very little to no incentive to do these bosses beyond the occasional reaper task, but more importantly, they do not represent the PVM experience of RuneScape 3. Yet, it is the first PVM that players will come into contact with. By the time a new player gets to the actual PVM experience, such as the mid-level bosses I mentioned earlier, they have already played the game for hundreds of hours, which is a very large time investment, especially in the modern era of games. Second, providing an easier path for players to learn higher levels of PVM can reduce the split in the community of casual players who feel locked out of higher levels of PVM content, and the high level PVMers who don't want PVM to become easier and to reduce the skill expression. A direct example of this is the current community feedback to the proposed changes to the Fractured Staff of Armadale and Animate Dead. When the changes were announced, we saw a large community of casual players who believed they wouldn't be able to do PVM at all without these being as strong as they were, and they were very against potential nerfs. On the opposite end, we see a community of higher level PVMers who want it nerfed as it essentially allows players to ignore a large portion of boss mechanics and put in minimal effort to PVM. Thirdly, if more players have an easier and a better time learning higher end PVM, it keeps more players interested in the game and learning new content. This also changes the way a portion of the players interact with the game, going from more AFK content and using RuneScape 3 as a second screen game to actively playing. And lastly, this might be a little bit less important, but I 
genuinely believe that high-level PVM is one of the most fun and engaging things to do in the game, and for many players it's currently fairly limited. While it's not for everyone, in my experience there is a decent amount of players who want to do it, but they feel locked out due to the difficulty of learning it. Now that I've addressed what I believe the problem is, and why I believe this is an important problem to solve, I want to propose a few ideas I have which might act as solutions. While there are many possible solutions, I hope to provide a few potential ideas here which might be solid by themselves, or inspire new ideas. I acknowledge that some of these ideas might have unforeseen consequences, require too much effort or dead time to be viable, or they're not quite in line with Jagex's vision for the game. First, I want to address the new player basics and habit building. One important thing that could be changed is the default keybinds. A majority of the PVM community ends up with main action bar keybinds using the keys 1 to 5, Q through T, and A to G. Having a main action bar with those as the default keybinds could build good and comfortable keybind habits right from the very start of the game. This makes it much easier for players to give full manual or basics only revolution a try. Additionally, at least the first two action bars could be given default keybinds as well. These could range from Z to B or shift with the easy to reach keybinds I mentioned before. Ideally, there would be multiple default keybind layouts to allow for some choice if players might not like a certain set. These could be inspired by default keybind settings for other popular games. I want to reiterate that in my opinion having good, comfortable, and easy to use keybinds is one of the single most important things towards learning BVM. The difference between an easy to press freedom or shield plus resonance switch can be gigantic. I believe this is a relatively simple solution to implement with a potentially huge payoff. For inspiration on what good defaults might be, I highly recommend the interface guide section in the PVM Encyclopedia Discord. Another thing that can be improved is the default interface layouts. While the customizable nature of the RuneScape 3 interface is amazing, it's undeniable that it can be a problem for newer players. It might then be a good idea to provide a better and expanded selection of default interfaces. Currently, the only somewhat decent one is the new player interface, but even this one can be improved. There are many very clean interfaces that players have posted online which could serve as good defaults. Additionally, many of the default interfaces do not account for extra action bars. An idea could be to have a few default presets either with built-in space for extra action bars or two to three presets for both three and five action bar setups. Another important suggestion is to unbind WASD as a default setting for camera movement. Most new players are completely unaware that the scroll click function allows you to move the camera. Freeing up WASD to move the camera is fairly essential to learning PVM, as it both frees up four very frequently used keys, and it eliminates additional actions your keyboard have needs to take while PVMing. While it's important to keep this function in for existing players who are already used to it, I believe it's important that new players do not build this detrimental habit. Old school RuneScape does not have these default keybinds, and no one complains about it there. It's entirely okay to have new players move the camera with either the mouse or the arrow keys. If it's a concern, WASD as default camera movement keys can be one of the default keybind layouts that I suggested earlier. Regardless, they should remain possible camera keybinds, but they shouldn't be the default. As it currently stands, for many players, learning to unbind WASD as camera keybinds is a very large hurdle to learning higher level PVM. Many players give up on it because they do not have enough easy keys free for comfortable keybinds, and WASD being unavailable is a large contributor to this. This is something I actually struggled with a lot myself, as I also used to use WASD for the camera movement, and I just didn't have enough keybinds to PVM. Now I want to address some solutions towards the path of bossing and improving in PVM skill. As I've said in previous sections, there's currently a lack of real early game PVM, and the little that does exist is mostly outdated, or it doesn't teach players any new PVM skills. I'm going to touch on these bosses one by one and offer a couple of ideas. The King Black Dragon has no real noticeable mechanics, which leads to the only thing players learn being that they're required to bring a form of anti-fire. This boss could benefit from a small rework, perhaps adding colored dragonfire which might target certain tiles, causing the player to need to move. 
Adding an attack with some warning or wind up which players could use the resonance ability on or avoid it by stunning KBD could be an idea too. Not to the degree where it would one shot the player, but something like a 1 to 2k hit which is worth avoiding but not deadly. God Wars Engine 1 has bosses that mostly don't have mechanics, or very vague ones like Krill who can hit harder if the player is praying. But for bosses that already have some mechanics these should be made more obvious. But more importantly, they have already been reworked to have mechanics in the hard mode God Wars Engine 1 fight. And while I'm in no way suggesting replacing the normal mode bosses with the hard mode ones, it could be beneficial to provide more incentive for lower level players to do the hard mode fights. Currently, absolutely no one really does hard mode God Wars Engine 1, apart from a few hundred kills if the player doesn't get the pet within 2-4k normal mode kills, and even then most players just choose to AFK normal mode instead. Not to mention, more often than not, the players going for these boss pets are massively overgeared. Hard mode God Wars Engine 1 could have its drops buffed in order to incentivize newer players to do it and deal with the mechanics. Alternatively, the hard mode bosses could have their stats and damage slightly toned down. The Dagonoth Kings should serve to teach the player about the combat triangle, but due to their design, where they all exist in the same room at the same time, it leads the player standing in one corner to only aggro one of them, or they AFK them with much higher level gear using poison to kill the off style ones. Very few players actually bring in hybrid gear to kill all three normally. Due to the way modern gear heavily penalizes off-style weapons, proper hybriding requires more gear than it did when the bosses were originally released. Hybrid gear itself is generally fairly rare and unused, yet these bosses could be a great way to introduce players to weapon switching. Potential solutions would include having more common hybrid armor available, separating the spawns to allow players more leeway and time to switch their armor and gear, or perhaps it could be a way to make it so that players only have to do a weapon style switch rather than the weapon plus armor style switch. If these changes are made, this would make the Dagonoth Kings a great boss to learn basic hybrid switches. Additionally, or alternatively to changing existing new player bosses, more bosses aimed at new players, like for example the Norm Mode Art Glacier, could be released. This is potentially more work, but it could have great results. These bosses should be aimed at players with stats and gear around levels 40 to 60. Some good inspiration can be found in old school RuneScape, where low level or free players have bosses like Bryophyta and Obor. These bosses are also gated in how often they can be done by requiring key drops from giants. While a direct adaptation isn't quite what I'd recommend, a similar idea could be nice. Ideally, these bosses would have one to two simple mechanics each, which would serve to teach players a new PVM skill. Some examples could include avoiding or stepping on specific tiles, using anticipate and or freedom to avoid a stun or a bleed, stunning the boss to either avoid mechanic or stall its damage, or using defensives like devotion, resonance, debility, and reflect. Not necessarily Barricade, as Barricade unlocks at quite a high level. Essentially, many of the mechanics used in modern higher level PVM, but isolated to only be one or two mechanics per boss, with larger windows of time to execute them, and much more forgiving punishment. For example, they won't kill the player, but they might cause the player to eat a piece of food they might not have otherwise needed to. And loot for these bosses wouldn't need to be amazing, rather just enough to entice players to do it. Some ideas could be a selection of cosmetic weapons, a title, level 50 to 60 hybrid gear, which could then be used for the Dagnoth Kings, or lower level weapons with slightly higher stats than normal gear at that level. Think something along the lines of rune weapons versus good raider, or even basic rune versus rune plus 2 or plus 3. Nothing a high level player would want, but something that a low level player might enjoy to get as a drop, while not being an essential upgrade. Common drops could simply be on par with medium level Slayer, again nothing that would encourage high level players to farm it, but enough to let low level players do it without feeling like they're wasting time. Something similar to normal mode Arc Glacier, where players can turn on and off mechanics might be really interesting, but I believe it's not necessary at all, as it seems like it'd be a lot harder to create. That being said, I want to applaud the release of normal mode Arc Glacier, as it has been a great way to introduce players to concepts like prayer flicking, saving defenses like devotion, and many other mechanics. 
And lastly, I want to touch on some existing and new systems that could be used to help players learn bosses. Practice mode is a big one, and it currently goes all but unused. This is most because players still need to invest their own supplies into the kills they do, for guaranteed zero rewards. For many players, this gives them no incentive to try practice mode at any boss. I really see only two possible solutions for this. The ideal solution would be to allow the players to save a singular preset when they start a practice mode instance. They could then go into the instance and it would load this preset. If the player dies, teleports out, or otherwise leaves the instance, their equipped gear gets removed and deleted. Essentially, this will allow players to try bosses in practice mode without needing to invest charges and other supplies like food and runes. This removes the cost of learning boss encounters and allows players to freely explore them. A potential problem might lead possible bugs leading to item dupes, and because of that, this solution would need to be handled very carefully. Perhaps there's a way to refund used supplies in a different way upon leaving the instance. Alternatively, allow for common drops, but not rare drops, to make practice mode not feel like wasted time when a kill's finally achieved. On top of that, practice mode should allow the player to choose which phase they want to practice. It has the potential to be a very valuable resource for improving at PVM, but for many later bosses, it can take 3 to 5 minutes, if not longer, to reach the later phases. Allowing players to skip to the phase they want to practice would encourage the use of practice mode and allow for more efficient usage of time. Another important thing to note is that there are many established, player-made resources available. One of the main ones is the PVM Encyclopedia Discord and or GitHub site, but for new players these can be very hard to find. A message about this could be given for example when the player unlocks the PVM hub, or as a dialogue option when death assigns a new reaper task, similar to how the player can ask for tips when being assigned a slayer task. This could work similarly to how players can access the wiki through in-game methods. And the very last point I want to talk about is that many bosses require things like shield switching, and additionally many players want to learn to DPS better, which requires weapon switches. I know this is a controversial opinion, but I believe that adding a limited amount of built-in 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 macro keybinds could significantly lower the barrier to entry towards weapon switching. These would be executed by adding in a type of custom defense or constitution ability, where the player can make this ability do two to three things in a specific order. By adding these in, Dragus could also clear up their stands on macroing and officially punish players for using excessive macros with third-party software. Though that is a separate issue that I do not wish to address in this video. Now, to close this off, I'm a player who loves the game, and I would love for there to be more people doing PVM as that's something that I enjoy, and I want more people to have the opportunity to enjoy it. That being said, this is my first time making a video like this, and I'm by no means a developer. I'm simply a player who hopes to bring something that he finds important to the people who matter. Whether you agree or disagree, thanks for watching. And lastly, for the people looking to learn PVM, it is a ton of fun, and it's definitely worth the effort. Yes! 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 Oh my oh, fucking, fucking god. god. Fuck's sake, yes! <laughs> Finally! Oh, yes! Oh my god. Oh, fuck yeah.